diggity, another unboxing video. I'm Dave Kassler, KE0OG, here to bring you the unboxing of the MFJ model 1788 Super High Q Loop Antenna. As ever, I'm on the outlook for things that might help people in covenant-controlled communities and apartments and things like that. And this antenna, although it's in this huge box behind me, uh, might fill that bill. So we're going to take it apart. We're going to do a whole bunch of testing with it and compare it to my vertical and uh, compare it to the chameleon loop and do all sorts of fun things with it. So let's get right on with the unboxing. First of all, we've got to get the box on the table. Now I have here some pliers because we'll probably need those. Let's see, where is the top? There. Uh, if anybody ever tell you this thing isn't big, don't believe them. It's got all kinds of stickers on it. Seems like it's been around the world. I'm going to use the pliers. I'm going to use the pliers here to take these out. These are Great big giant staples. Ah, there's one. Look at that. Okay. There's another. And a third. Don't try taking these out with your fingers. No, we're up to four. Five. Six. Seven. Nine. These appear to be copper. I would think there would be some way to connect those together into an antenna. Well, let's see what we got here. Okay. Are we ready? Here we go. Okay. It's now out of the box. <coughs> All right. Let's see what we got. This is foam padding, pretty heavy foam padding. Uh, there's no other interior cardboard. This right here is the control unit. So let's uh, start taking some of these things apart. It's uh, packaged, I think it's fair to say, robustly. This is the clamp that can be used to mount it horizontally. And I can take this out now. Well, you could have fun with that. Okay, we got something. Similar to that on the other side. Be careful with the knife when you're cutting these great big things because it's easy to cut yourself. Okay, we're trying to get that box out from stuck under everything. Here's the box, and we'll take this plastic out. All right. First, let's look at the antenna itself. It's huge. <laughs> it mounts this way, vertically, uh, or mounts horizontally this way. And when you mount it horizontally, there's a bracket that comes out to here and holds the, where you can attach it to the mast. Okay, it is completely assembled. There's nothing that needs to be taken apart or adjusted or anything like that. 
the coax connector is down here at the bottom, right there. That's where the coax attaches. Now the coax has the RF on it, and it also has the control signals because up in here, oh man, I've gone off the screen. Let's tilt it down. Up in here is a gigantic capacitor, variable capacitor. Okay, we'll take it apart at some point so you can see that. Okay, so here it is on the operating table in my uh, my surgery center here. And what we're going to do is take off the top, unscrew all these little screws that are around the bottom here, take the thing off so we can see what's inside, and then I'm going to connect the controller, see if we can see how it works. Okay, many screws later. We see the top is plastic. We lift this off, we can see what's inside. This right here, I just put my hand here for size. This is the mother of all capacitors. It's a butterfly capacitor, meaning that there's stators on this side and on this side. And then in the center, uh, the uh, capacitor uh, moves back and forth so that that way they can make a very, very strong connection here. This is heliarct uh, right here. Uh, to this and this is heliarced over here and all these are heliarced in place uh, so that there's just absolutely beautifully strong uh, connections to keep uh, everything in uh, in order down here we see the uh, coax is connected to this little loop right here which isn't very big it's just a piece of wire that looks like about 12 gauge wire and this is the mounting point right here again look at the level of uh, welding that was done so there's got to be a secondary use for this uh, for this cover right here. I mean, wouldn't it look like you could maybe do something like this with the cover? I don't know. Sing the MFJ song. And then there's a little motor that turns that capacitor back and forth. And down here in the bottom where the coax cable is, okay, there's a small loop right in here that feeds the larger loop. Okay, so Wow, that thing is sturdy and big. Let's look at what's inside the box. Doesn't say anything on the box. Okay, here is some mounting hardware. Sturdy mounting hardware. Strong, sturdy mounting hardware for mounting it to the mast and then there is this little control unit I printed out the manual yesterday from online and read about it you use these buttons and stuff to uh, turn the little uh, motor on in there and adjust that capacitor. Okay, it has a built-in SWR meter, so you can tell when it's exactly tuned, but it does require a little bit of a signal from a transmitter for that to work, okay? Now there is, or should be in here somewhere, a power supply that you plug into the wall that is not grounded because aha here it is right here now there's something special about this power supply you need to note and that is that 
It's an AC adapter and it provides output 12 volts, 500 milliamp, um, and the ground on here, the ground on the power supply is not, repeat, not grounded to the other metal. So you need to make sure you use this particular supply. If you do use 12 volts into the back of this uh, with, say, a battery or something, that battery has to be floating, okay, because the way they get the motor to turn in here is by switching polarities and things like that. Okay, we're going to see what happens. We've turned the little unit on. Okay, and we're going to see what happens when we push push buttons. Oh, okay. We get this little motor here, and we see the plates of the capacitor slowly turning out like that. At the same time, they're disappearing on this side. Okay. All right. So this unit turns that, and it doesn't turn it real fast. So it behooves you kind of keep track of where it has been tuned to. The thing has limit switches that will keep it from turning too far. There, I just heard one of them click. Okay, so that's what's inside this thing. And there's only the coax connection because the power and signals are sent over the coax as DC. And, of course, the signal goes out as AC and comes up to the little loop in there. So this is what's in the box. Four bolts and some little screws, big hairy U-bolt, uh, some clamps that go on, um, some sort of a bracket, some heavy little clamps, although they're very light, made of aluminum, and the uh, bracket that goes inside. So that's what's in the box. Very well packaged, sturdy, everything seems to be in good shape. And in the next video, we'll be mounting it and testing it and seeing how it works. This will handle 100 watts. It's not a QRP. Actually, I think it handles about 150 watts, uh, enough for this uh, safety margin for your normal antenna. Now, that's different from the Chameleon antenna, which is designed more for QRP. This is designed for a, an ordinary HF radio. So, until next time, please click like, subscribe, use both feet when walking, and I'll see you next time, 73.